So if your social media strategy works, remember they're coming to your website. If that's not taken care of, um, it's better to not invite them over to the house than invite them over and have it just be an absolute train wreck, right? Because right. then they're not coming back. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone to this latest episode of the Development Effectiveness Strategies in the Gym and Java program. If you're like me, you've struggled with the whole concept of branding and marketing. Certainly, we know it's important to have a website, but how does social media play into this? And how do we feed individuals to our website? And our visual appearance of our site is so critical. Today we've got with us branding and marketing expert Robbie Fowler, who's going to share with us the important things that we need to be thinking about in developing our brand and our appearance and something as simple as a website making that appealing for everyone and using it to our advantage. So I think you're going to enjoy our time with Robbie. Uh, I'd like to start out a little bit with asking you to tell us your story. Our viewers would love to find out a little bit about how you got to the point where you're at right now. So I grew up in Texas um, and I have spent lots of time, it seems like, in a couple of spaces. I've either run my own personal brand business, or I've been in a startup company, or I've been in a church plant. So those are the three spheres I have found myself in after college. You both work on the for-profit and nonprofit mm-hmm. worlds. And uh, share a little bit with our viewers and our audience why, if you believe that having a, a personal brand and a story is is so important. So it's kind of th- Depends on where you are. I would give three different answers. If you're missionary outraising support, you need to be able to tell your story and think of yourself as a personal brand when you're wearing that hat. If you're part of a larger nonprofit organization, you're the leader, you need to stop and think through, if I attach this too much to myself, what happens when I'm not here? Am I doing damage to this thing that I love and you know want to want it to grow when I'm not the face of it? And if you're in that smaller space where uh, it's... It, People don't know what your organization is, or they're not familiar with it, or it doesn't really have a recognized brand, then you do need to think a little bit more of telling your story and the story of the organization. And if you're the founder of it, those, those sometimes are, are the same. What are some suggestions, what are some tips that you would give right away to helping to establish your brand? Yeah, well, for Each of those, um, the first thing we think of is oftentimes that visual aspect. So we say brand or we hear the word brand. For many of us, we immediately go to logo. Oh, so I need a logo, right? Okay, I do, you're right. I need to go grab a logo. Some of us think a little bit beyond that to other visual elements like a color palette or my visual identity, or need my website to look a certain way, or my brochure should look sharp, it should have good design, because that's my brand. That is just one aspect. I think that's one of six elements that goes into your brand. And it's the only one we think about, it's the most concrete, but for most of us, again, unless we're a really large organization, it's not the actually the most important. It's very important. I come from a design background, but it's not the most important. So the other elements you need to think through. That's the visual identity part of your brand. Mm -hmm. Then there's a verbal part of your brand. So if you're in a uh, nonprofit organization that works with higher ed, right? And that's your ministry, that's the space you're in. Well, you're going to need to have a verbal brand that matches that audience. So probably sharp, witty, rebellious, punk rock, probably not the verbal brand you need, right? (laughs) If that's the audience that you're trying to connect with. Um, So there's a verbal piece, then there's the value piece. So if you're, uh, this happens a lot in this space, and that is, Jim, I would love for you to donate $50,000. And you're like, ooh, that's, that's a big number. Well, Donors usually that can donate $50,000 are also usually fairly smart and experienced. They don't, there's a reason they have the kind of money that they can, they could write that kind of a check. They've got an intuitive sense of knowing whether or not 
based on the value of the brand you're presenting, they know like I could write you a $50,000 check and you would have no idea what to do with it. Right. You're just not at the level to handle. So I will write you a $500 check. No offense to you. But if I wrote you a check for $50,000, you would literally pass out and, and die. You just wouldn't know what to do with, with that big of a, a donation. So that's the value aspect where you want that to match with whatever you're asking. So if you're asking for something smaller, you know, the, the common analogy is you don't walk into a dollar store and expect to pay Rolex prices, right? That's different right. values, vice versa. You don't walk into a Rolex store and ask them where... Where's your dollar section, right? Right. So starting to get less concrete. Visual, I can see it. I can identify it. Verbal, value, those need to all line up. Then there's the one that I kind of call the villagers just because it begins with a V, but you can think of community or tribe. But uh, there's an aspect to your brand where I say, oh, Jim and a couple of my other friends that are friends with Jim and I, um, they're all into this nonprofit organization or supporting this particular missionary or whatever. I like them. I want to be counted among them. So I will consider doing what they do because I want to sit at the same lunch table as them. Mm. Okay. So that's that, that that's remarkably strong. Um, and you can probably think of examples of, of where you've done this, like, I didn't see anything in the market. I didn't see a marketing message. I just saw so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, two leaders I respect. They use this particular journal or they use this particular devotional and you go out and buy it, right? Nothing to do with marketing, nothing to do with logo, right. uh, probably not even visual or verbal or value. It's, hey, I want to be with those people. Two people I really trust. That's the brand they chose. I'm going to choose it because of them. So that's the villagers piece. There's two more real quick. And that is the... Uh, experiential aspect to your brand, right? So this is another one that happens in this space a lot. Jim comes, talks to me, uh, ask me, hey, would you like to become a supporter or donor? Yeah, that sounds great. Let me go talk to my spouse about it. Check it out. Go talk to spouse. By the way, that's where I share the story, your story, right? That's why yes. you need one. I'm going to tell. Yeah. So how was your meeting? Did you have that meeting today? Um, here's a little bit about what he's trying to do. And what do you think, babe? And she's going to, uh, you know, so I've got to be able to communicate that it's my spouse and remember a story and share that. Then I go, yeah, let's do it. And I, and I now turn back to you and I can't figure out like, Jim, I've got money to give you. Where, how do I do that? <laughs> I went on your website. I don't see it anywhere. Um, and that's an experiential part of your brand that happens a lot in this space where it's like, I would like to support you. Uh, but it's easier to donate blood and get a, give, give a kidney than it is for me to give you money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the last spec, uh, aspect is emotional. And this is important in this space too, where they want to, there is an emotional aspect to your, to, to any brand. And um, you, you've got to think about, they want to be proud of the things and the people they support. Um, they, so, so there's an emotional aspect to like, I feel good that I'm a generous person and I'm supporting this kind of ministry that makes this kind of uh, good thing in the world happen. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the emotional aspect. So those are the six. That's what you need to be keeping in mind. Now, what if I am the nonprofit leader out there and this whole aspect, this whole idea of social uh, media just overwhelms me. Uh, where do I, but I, I know I need to get in there. Where do I start? How do I go about kind of venturing into this territory? Yeah. Well, take a deep breath. It's overwhelming for all of us who also want to have a life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's other issues there for another podcast, right? To go. Um, but for most of us, that's normal for the, because the space is so enormous, it's growing all the time. What channels, what mediums should I be on? And then you find out there's a whole new one, you know, like I haven't figured the other ones out now. TikTok's on the scene. Am I supposed to be doing TikTok? What about Snapchat? Is that still out there? On and on it goes. So it's normal to feel overwhelmed. When it comes to uh, strategy on, okay, how do I use that? What role does this play? In general, you need to remember that social media gives you the opportunity to, for the most part, cast the widest net, okay? And it's going to fall in the, in the kind of bucket of marketing, okay? So let's keep this really, really simple and get rid of the 
technical terms that sound get confusing. Marketing's role is simply to make more people, in this case, we'd be thinking probably supporters or donors. It, the goal of marketing is to make more of them aware that you are out there. So in that sense, if we're thinking funnel, right, it's way up here at the top mm -hmm. of the funnel because it casts the widest net. Now, here's what too many of us don't think of because we want a strategy for managing that. And I say, before I give you the strategy, quick time out. If the strategy I give you works, <laughs> cast the net and starts to bring some fish in, so to speak. Um, if you don't think through your website, it's, it's worse than not casting the net at all, okay? So if your social media strategy works, remember they're coming to your website. If that's not taken care of, um, it's better to not invite them over to the house then invite them over and have it just be an absolute train wreck, right? Because right. then they're not coming back. Great. So that's the that's the first part is remember the role that it's playing. Secondly, um, it's it's pretty easy to you need to think about uh, the people if if we're thinking more in terms of support and donors, um, you need to think through where are the supporters and donors that I am already working with of the various social media channels. Where are the kinds of people I already have attracted, where are they hanging out? You know, so if they're not on Facebook or for most of us, they're not probably on TikTok. So uh, you need to figure out what platform they're on, start there, and then start with a rhythm or a routine that is manageable for you. And that's different for, for everyone. Can you talk about what kind of services that you offer that you provide for individuals who they've been listening to this uh, during our, during this broadcast and they've they've said, wow, I really need someone like Robbie. What can they do for me? What if they're a nonprofit organization? If they're a nonprofit or or if they're a missionary and they need that website piece, they mm -hmm. can oh, go to mydiysupport.com. Okay, they could go get that Buy it right now, get started today, have a website up in two days if they have their stuff together. If they're an organization and I have, um, you know, I work with those sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, like, hey, we're an organization. Typically what I'm helping them do is most of them struggle with clarity on exactly um, how do they communicate what they do to a potential donor or supporter. That's where much of the struggle is. And how's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Yeah, it's easy. It's just to email me. Um, I'm doing work in those spaces all of the time, but you may not find, you know, everything there is that I could help or offer for this particular space on the websites. Easiest place to go is RobbieF.com. Most social media stuff is R Fowler, just the letter R and then my last name, F-O-W-L-E-R. Hey, any closing comments, anything that uh, you just add to our viewers? One other thing uh, for them to know about as far as resource goes, that's absolutely free. I have a podcast. It's called the brand ed, like branded, but brand one word ed kind of like education, the play on words there, brand ed uh -huh, podcast like of, you know, even a deeper dive into some of the things we've talked about here on that podcast, including the framework that I use to work with every client and any of those three industries. Robbie, thank you very much. Once again, I appreciate your heart. Thank you for helping out our audience. And uh, I hope, uh, hope someone will get in touch with you. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time with Robbie Fowler today. He gave us some great tips, great suggestions on what to do with our visual, our verbal, our different aspects related to branding and marketing. I hope it was helpful for you. If you like videos like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to make sure that you find out about future videos like this on this channel and continue to subscribe and watch our videos on this channel. If you need to get me, reach out to me. You can always do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. You can submit questions to Jim and Java at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. On Twitter, you can reach me at deveffectivenessstrategies at uh, on instagram and as we always say we're, we strive to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded take care see you next time